Welcome my friends, Seven Gray here. I hope you're all having a fantastic day out there. I'm still struggling with electrical problems and so today I'm gonna to show you how I go about trying to solve this issue. A few days ago we installed an ACR switch. We got the ACR working, everything's working great with the switch. But as a result, this switch goes so far down, I had to move the cigarette lighter plug from up here to down here. I'm not sure exactly when all these problems started. It happened about that time. It might have been a few days earlier. I'm not exactly sure. But there's a number of components now that are not working. Windshield wipers, that's the most important. Cigarette lighter, that's number two because I use that for Google Maps on my phone and charging the phone while driving. And then all of the fans don't work. So that's the ceiling fans up above, the max fans that I installed, um, and then the fan right here above the windshield. Now it's interesting because all of those pretty much have a similar thing in common in that they're all hooked into the same place in the fuse box. So let me show you that. I'm in the parking lot of Home Depot here, so if you hear a lot of traffic, it's because cars are going past me and uh, it's just sort of the nature of the parking lot that I'm hanging out in today. Okay, this is the fuse box here and all of these wires in this grouping up here in this top corner are pretty much the areas that are having problems. These wires here do not have fuses from the fuse box. They run as a bare wire out of the plugs and then they have their own fuses in line. So one of those is the windshield wipers. Originally the windshield wipers used to exist down here on one of the fuses, but there was a short in the wire, and rather than tracking down the wire and replacing that, we ran a fresh wire from this top corner. So that's one of those wires that's not working. So that's the main one I want to focus on today and figure out. I think first I'm just going to pull apart the gear shift again and show you the wiring inside of there and what's going on. I found two broken wires overall in everything I've looked at, but I don't think either one of these is causing the problems and I'm not sure exactly where those wires go. There's four Torx wrench bolts here that have to be removed. After removing these, you'll be able to see inside of the gear shift area. Here's the new cigarette lighter that I put in. This is the ground wire, this black wire, which is grounded over here. And then I have the power wire. Um, the ground wire is new. Originally there was no ground wire on this, so I added that. And here's the power wire. And this power wire is traced down into the dash. Here's the same blue wire that goes over to the cigarette lighter. Um, I'm gonna unplug that at both ends. So now the cigarette lighter is without power on this end and down there at the fuse box. So I'm going to try the fan. Nothing works here with the fan. Try the windshield wipers. No windshield wipers. So there's no difference uh, having removed that from the equation. So there's something else that is going on. This is the PDF wiring diagram manual and here is the layout of the fuse box. All of the problems are in this area number here, one, which is not used. So basically these are reserved areas for you to run your own custom wires with your own fuses, and that's the block that seems to be dead. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what is powering that section there. Originally the wiper was on number 11 down here, over here in this corner. And then when we rewired it, we put it up here with a direct wire. This section over here is a bus bar that's under the hood. And this is a mystery part for me. This number six here, which it says accessory 80 amp. And I did a look up on this. This is called a um, USD Cooper circuit breaker. This is an 80 amp circuit breaker here. And I did a look up in Cooper's website and it says it's an automatic reset on this unit. I don't know if this is part of what's involved but given this is the brake, this is ignition, headlight, taillight, fuel relay, all of those are working but it's some accessories that are not working. Maybe it's this unit that's having some problems. I don't know. The connections look good there. Um, one of the broken wires that I know of is over here 
with the starter relay section under the hood and I can show you that in a minute. I have the hood up. I'm going to show you that bus bar and the relay under here. So this is the bus bar back here. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then there's a relay down here. This is the 80 amp auto switch here and uh, the connections look good for it. Uh, there's the bus bar there. And then over here is the starter relay. And you'll notice here's the new wire we put on for the ACR. That looks fine, but there is one broken wire here and it was broken before we started. I mean, I'm not sure exactly where this wire goes. I think it probably goes right there onto this connection, but I don't know. It might go over here as well. And I can't find anything to tell me where this broken wire goes. And I have not been able to trace this back under the dash to know exactly where it goes. I can see it goes here and it goes somewhere up in a wire loom here, but I can't tell. I don't think that's the problem. This has been broken for a while. Um, I noticed this first time probably three or four weeks ago. So windshield wipers, everything else is working while this has been broken. I don't know what this is for. I have two devices to check voltage. I have a Harbor Freight cheap multimeter and I really only know how to use one section on this and that is the 12 volt section to check voltage. I've been doing that every morning on my house batteries to check the voltage there and every morning it's between 12.7 and 12.5. So the house batteries are doing really really well, pretty healthy and uh, they're charging from the ACR unit so I feel good about that. This device here, as I understand it, you poke it into a positive source and you use this little clip on the back side and put it on a ground and this thing will light up if there's power through it, but it doesn't tell you specific voltage. So I'm going to try to use a combination of these in my diagnosis, but I don't really know what I'm doing and where to check for stuff just to see if there's voltage. I really don't know. Okay, I've plugged the cigarette lighter back into the fuse box, so it should be live. And now I'm going to try to do a test and see if there's power. If it lights up, it should be a live wire. And I don't see a light, so I'm assuming that this means it's dead. But I do want to test this on something else and see if I get uh, voltage going through it. I've got to think of something that I can test it with. <clears throat> I am just so frustrated here. I went and took this guy here and I stuck it in the cigarette lighter that I'm using for the house batteries to power my to power the fridge and power everything else figuring i know that that is a live source so i stuck it in the end of it and all of a sudden i heard a click this thing lit up for a half a second and then it went off and now there's no power at all coming to the fridge there's no power going out to any of my devices so i've lost power to my fridge i've lost power to my Wi-Fi hotspot. I've lost all cigarette lighters completely out of my van. No USB anywhere. So I am one step further behind than I was before. This is so infuriating to me. Um, I don't get angry very easily, but I do get very frustrated. And right now I am super frustrated and not able to move forward. Um, I had hoped to do a video here, but I've got to take a time out. I'm going to try to come back to this later, but I've just got to sit down and get a drink and try to calm down. Okay, I took a break, had a drink, laid down, checked some emails, looked at some comments, answered those, made a couple of phone calls. I'm back. I just looked at the fuse box in my power box for the house batteries. 15 amp fuse was blown. That's the one that goes up to the USB and cigarette lighter. So now the fridge is running again. I've got my hotspot running again. Things are good there. So now I can go back to working on the electrical problems up on the dash. I've gone through and I've pulled out all of these fuses and all of them are intact. They're not broken so they seem to have good connections. What I've not done is check these relays over on this side. So there's a whole bunch of relays here. I'm not sure how to check relays. All of these wires up here in this area this blue wire, this red wire, this other blue wire, this sort of brownish orange wire. These are the ones that are having the problems just in this one little area here. So I think that whatever feeds the power or the ground for just this area here is what's causing the problems. 
So I think I came up with a temporary solution, which is to take the wire for the windshields, which is this one here. This is the windshield wire and moving it over to this position right here. So this position is for ignition, which I think means that you have to have the key on for this to work. So now it's in the key position or ignition position. So I need to turn on the key over here. Reach and turn on the key. So the key is on. That's in the ignition position and go up to the windshield wipers and let's see what happens. And I have windshield wipers. So that is major progress for me. At least I have windshield wipers. It's supposed to rain tonight and I can get around. I just have to have my key turned for the windshield wipers to work, which is fine. So I can get by with that. That's a short term solution. At least I know sort of what's going on. So the question is how to solve getting the power to those other items. It's not nearly as important to get the ceiling fans and everything else running, but I would like to get that sometime soon. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.